this solve example uh, will demonstrate how can we use a different method uh, in analyzing heat heat exchanger which is the effectiveness and NTU method okay and then uh, if you remember uh, during the lecture uh, there are two ways of uh, using the effectiveness NTU uh, we can use graph uh, if given the graph is provided and we can also use the equation Personally, I would love to use the graph uh, because of uh, it's much handy compared to use quite quite complicated equation uh, if you prefer to use empirical equation. So let's look into this uh, problem. A concentric heat exchanger with a heat transfer area of 20 square meter operating counter flow is used to heat one kilogram per second of water from uh, 40 degrees Celsius to 140 degrees Celsius. The water has a CP of uh, 4.179 kilojoule per kilogram Kelvin. Uh, and the uh, heating uh, is done using uh, hot gases at a flow rate of 1.9 kilogram per second that enter the heat exchanger at 350 degrees Celsius and exit at 10 degrees Celsius. The CP of the gases is uh, 1 kilojoule per kilogram Kelvin. So the question is estimate the overall heat transfer coefficient. This example I took it from online resources. So on the on the right top corner you can scan and you can refer to the sources in uh, online. So, <clears throat> it's always uh, best to start with uh, giving the, the illustration of the heat exchanger. I prepare it here. So, from the given problem, we know, we know that the T hot in, uh, T hot here is actually, um, uh, this is uh, hot gases, so I'll write it here, this is hot gases. Okay, it entered the, the heat exchanger at temperature of 350 de degrees Celsius and um, exit at 100 degrees Celsius. We are given the mass flow rate, mass flow rate which is 1.9 kg per second, and we are also given the CP of the hot gas, uh, 1 kJ per kilogram Kelvin. Uh, in the another side of the heat exchanger, we have the, 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 the cool side. So we want to um, heat water we want to heat water so water coming as cold so this is water stream okay it enters at temperature of 40 degrees celsius and exit at temperature of 140 degrees celsius we also given the mass of uh, cold so mass of water is mass flow rate of water is one kilogram per second and the cp of water is 4.197 uh, kilojoule uh, uh, kilogram uh, kelvin so remember, we have uh, to find out the three things uh, when we go for NTU, which uh, I think based on the graph, we need to know the a few things. Uh, we need to know uh, the how to find out the epsilon, uh, the equation for the NTU, and uh, we also need to find out key max uh, and so on. Yeah, we'll we'll, we'll go through. This one. So based on this one, uh, the first thing we need to find out is what is the T max. T delta T max is the maximum uh, temperature. Okay, which is if you look here, it must be uh, the difference between uh, the hot stream come in, then the the cold stream come into the heat exchanger, which is so T delta T max is uh, T H I minus T C I, which is equal to three uh, hundred and ten uh, degrees Celsius. Okay, next. Next is the flow capacity, or we um, uh, don't denote it with a CH, for example, C. C is basically MCP. Yeah. Okay, not delta T, delta T, that will become Q. So, C, so the, the stream capacity, stream capacity of the hot side will be CH. Okay, then that's equal to the mass of hot side and uh, the CP of the hot side and this is given in, uh, in the above illustration and we can also calculate uh, CC which is the flow uh, capacity flow heat capacity of the cold side which is the MC 
uh, mass of the cold liquid times the CP of the uh, cold fluid and then we uh, end up with CH equal to 1900 watt Kelvin and uh, um, CC is uh, 4197 watt Kelvin so whichever whichever higher we label as C max okay whichever higher we label as C max whichever lower we label as uh, uh, C min next is we need to find out the capacity relative capacity relative is basically simple it's C min divided by C max and as you can see we have all values available on the top next is uh, we find C relative next we need to go and find out what is the uh, effectiveness uh, number so effectiveness number is equal to Q actual Q actual is the Q the, the total heat that is transferred between the stream um, divided by the Q max okay Q max is what is the maximum uh, 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 possible then and that is equal to C uh, min C, C means time delta T max so that is the equation uh, so uh, then we can expand the Q actual using the hot side since our uh, okay uh, and then um, and, and then we know that uh, actually this guy okay M M uh, mass of the hot CP hot is equal to C min so these two guys can be cancel each other then we end up with uh, delta T hot divided by delta T max and we find out uh, epsilon or effective effectiveness equal to 0 0.81 so next what we do is we need to find out NTU and then we will use graph so this is the graph for the corresponding uh, type of heat exchanger uh, here we have a cross flow uh, so counter flow or cross flow so this uh, is supposed to be cross flow here uh, heat exchanger uh, and here I find uh, I use the one uh, both stream and mix uh, since uh, there is no clear indication what kind what type of uh, stream mixing you can always use the other one as well if you want to use uh, cross flow with one stream mix it's also uh, uh, possible so next is we need to find out the NTU from the graph so how to get it is from the um, epsilon okay from the effective vector and from the C relative C relative so we find out as uh, epsilon equal to 0.81 and C rel equal to 0.45 with these two coordinate we'll be able to find out uh, the point where they cross so we go there so this is the point where you have uh, C equal to uh, so if you if you notice this graph is for C equal to so this line is for C equal to 0.25 and this one is uh, for the C relative equal to 0.5 so it will be slightly above this line Okay, and then another one is we know uh, the epsilon equal to 81%, so it's slightly here because this is 90. So, so we take the straight line and we find out the crossing point, the crossing point here, and we find out the N2 equal to 2.9. I'll say 2.9. And then from the equation, we know that N2 equal to AU divided by C min. Uh, uh, so eventually we can uh, estimate the overall heat transfer coefficient equal to 275.5 watt per square meter Kelvin.